Drumdial in Tucson, Arizona, USA with the founder and creator of Drumdial, Steve Fisher. Thanks. Thank welcome. you so much for taking yep. time. Well, welcome to Drumdial. Well, thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. This is really cool. And yep. I, I want to tell the viewers, first off, I only recently knew really what drum dial was. I, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was. And what I meant by that is people would say, um, well, do you use this contraption and do you use that and do you use drum dial? And I always said, no, man, I'm old school. I use a drum key and you know I tune and we'll talk about how I've tuned my drums in the past. But I, I thought that drum dial was something that you put on your drum and it somehow turned the lugs and you know I didn't realize that but that's not what it is and what we're going to get into with Steve today is we're going to talk we're going to get a little scientific a little bit and little and bit. Steve warned me that you know he does these clinics at high schools music stores universities and sometimes they can get so scientific that eyes glaze over and I don't want that to happen to all of you out there but I know that I have a wide enough audience that has a wide enough arc in the spectrum of different types of drummers and styles and how long they've been playing and how they Absolutely. hit their drums and what kind of drums, what kind of heads, do they have bottom heads, no, mm -hmm. yes. So there's, there, we're going to get a little scientific simply so that you understand the science, a bit of science about tuning and about caring for your drum heads right. and, and the hoops and what to watch out for on bearing edges of drums. We'll get into that, but first I gotta ask you, tell everybody a little bit yeah. about your background and how did this come about? Well, I've been tuning drums for years, okay. probably you know, since elementary school. Yeah, that was It was a big challenge for me to figure out how to do it. So you were playing drums playing back then? Playing drums okay. back then, and uh, tuning drums were, you know, came across as, as, as difficult. It was difficult mm -hmm. to do that. And I had an opportunity to have some t-shirts made. I was at a silk screen shop, I saw a silk screen tensionometer, and I thought that would be ideal for tuning a drum. And it did, it worked out well. And I when was a, this? This was, oh, back in the 70s. Oh, wow. Years ago. So I took a stack of washers, we put them together, you know, a travel indicator, and uh, worked with the spring mechanism and that, and we came up with drum now. So, Amazing. long time, been tuning drums for years. years and and, and years. give everybody, if you could, a bit of insight to your vocational background. Been the high school, university level, uh, a little bit of engineering classes, things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, big, big music background. Great, great. Steve's going to give us some insight into tuning drums and right. how to use absolutely your your product, the drum dial, so that yeah. guys can really tune their drums properly. And that's kind of a I feel right. strange using that term honestly because I think it's kind of like food or art, you know, music and well, is that yeah. the right sound? So that's sort of a gray area. I think maybe you can help define what's right. And what's wrong even though we have different ears and different preferences for how we like our drums to sound sure. and feel too well the main thing is that we want our drums to sound good mm -hmm. that's it and also have a nice even stick response especially from the toms right snare drums so unique individual to everyone yeah bass drum lowest note that, that you're possibly going to get but what all drums have in common is we want to tune all of them all of our lug areas exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have, once we have an even equal tension across the drum head, we have naturally an even pitch. Mm -hmm. And with drum dial, it makes it easy. Before we would tap tune at each tuning point, right. listen for it, but because the bearing edges are even, the hoops are even, and with the uniform head thickness, it makes it easy. Drum dial works very, very well. It lends itself well to that. You set the drum dial on top of the head, get you know close to your tuning lug, you match the pitches, match your gauge readings, and you're done. It's as simple as that. So how, let's start with the snare. We'll get into some other drums later, but let's start with the snare. How do right. they know what to watch for on the meter and, and well, why, what is the target and why? The, the target for, for a snare drum is between oh, 82 to, to 95. On the top head. On the top head. Okay. On the bottom head, never tighter than 82. Okay. The bottom resonant will just stretch beyond 82. A good tuning range for uh, a snare bottom resonant head is 80 to 82. I usually go 81. Okay. Okay. So on the top batter, we, let's say we go to, on this drum, you like it a little tighter, so we're going to go look at 90. So we've tuned this one to 90 to every tuning point. I like that. I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah. Got it at 90 on each one. Right. 90. Again, 90. 90. Now well, let's turn it around too okay. and show the folks at home or wherever they're at. Yeah. So you can see as he moves from a different lug, you could spin, turn the drum and, and right. show Right, then I think we could even detune this lug mm -hmm. to show you as we drop the tension. Drop it 
down, it comes down a little more, and then we bring it right back up to a 90. And I don't know if I can see that inside yeah. there. I can get it. And it's that easy. That's easy. So I have a question because I'm I'm trying to I don't think I'm unique and I think anything I think of they're thinking about there. So hopefully right. I'm asking a question that a lot of you are thinking of right now. If you're saying if we're telling them to tune, let's just pick the number 90, all the, the let's say they have two snare drums. Okay. And let's say one of them's this drum and maybe one's a wood piccolo. If they or let's say that they're both the same, but they want them to sound different. Should they then tune the bottom and top head both to the settings that you're suggesting, but yet change the sound of the drum, perhaps with the tension? They, here? they can do that, but if it's a piccolo snare, the mm -hmm. nice thing is is that the depth and diameter of that drum will naturally change the pitch. It'll change right. the sound completely. Just by virtue of the depth. Right. Yeah. So what's what's nice with drum dial is you can tune the heads you know, to the approximately the same tension. Mm -hmm. Say you tune this drum to 85, you could do for the top batter, 81 to 82 for the snare resonant. You could do the same thing with the piccolo, and the piccolo, the depth and diameter and the shell material will give you a completely different sound. All That's drums are unique sense. that way. Right. You're gonna have a similar, similar stick response, you know, from each drum, mm -hmm. but it will naturally sound different because of the, the depth of the drum and also the diameter. Have you ever got a call from someone who says, um, Maybe perhaps they, they took your parameters of what they should set this setting to, but they say that maybe the music they play is conducive to playing the snare in the throwed, thrown off position, in the top right, top right. position, and maybe that tension isn't giving them the right note they want. How would they adjust that where they have the right tension, but they want to change the note. So if they wanted a higher pitch, more like a timbali right. sound, like a Latin right. feel or something right. like that, this is an ideal setting for that, about 90. Oh, okay. for, for most, uh, probably 85 is a very common setting, mm -hmm. but 90 would give you a nice tension. Okay. I wouldn't tighten this much tighter than, say, 92, 93 mm -hmm. for this head, unless it's a Kevlar head. If you start going much tighter than that, we start getting into the marching drum area. Mm -hmm. where you yeah. get, and that's really tight. It's a high tension uh, on yeah. the drum. So. Yeah. But that's what I'd recommend to them. If they ask me, hey, what would I tune you know, my snare drum to to make it sound more like a timbali? Well, of course, turn the, the, the snare throw off, drop the snares, and bring this up a little bit higher to say, oh, 90, 92. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. So the bottom head of the snare drum is different from any other any drum. Any other drum. Have, except it's, maybe another snare. Another snare. It's very <laughs> unique. What happens is we use a, a really thin resonant side head. That's what gives us our high pitch, and mm -hmm. that's what makes the snare sound like a snare. So what happens is we have, in this area to either side of the snare drum, mm -hmm. we have a snare bed. It's cut in. It's a groove cut in to make where the actual snare chain can set down into the drum. Okay. So when we're tuning, if we're tuning by ear, you want to be very careful. You want to make sure you always dampen this bottom head. Because if you're tapping over top of one of these snare bed areas, yeah. it'll sound out of tune. Oh. So always dampen it. Because this is a thinner area and it does have a different fit. It has a lot more give because right. of that, right? If we were to measure inside the snare bed, mm -hmm. this right here is reading about 80 to 81. If we were to measure inside the snare bed, it would be a reading of 78. It's a lot looser in that area because there's a cut, a notch cut out. Interesting. So that what happens perfect. is because it's a thinner head, when you seat these heads, you never, never apply Don't palm press. pressure. Don't okay. apply. You just bring Don't give it CPR. Right. Okay. Bring, bring it up. Let it naturally, you know, uh, tension on its own. And then what we do is we equalize the tension mm -hmm. all the way around. And when we seat these heads, we always seat them, you know, crisscross the 12 o'clock, right. 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Same way. Bring it up. And then when we get approximately to the tension that we want, you tune in a circular pattern. One look after the next. One o'clock, two o'clock. You don't three, go opposite. Not, not back and forth. So Once it's seated, or mm -hmm. close to being seated, I shouldn't really say seated for this because the second type of seating is just bring the head up to the tension that you want. Okay. And when you're close, you start using drum dial at each tuning point, except for around the snare bit. You can go to this inside here. You'd set the, the, the clip off. You'd stay just to this side. And you use both lugs on the outside of that so point tune it to, to get that the point. absolutely okay. right. And you can see that happening. And then when you get to the other lug areas, say here between that, mm -hmm. it's you do just like you would on any other drum head. Okay. Now, but what's critical 
And what's nice with drum dial is that it gives you a range. You're not going to be tap tuning and over tension this drum head if you're using a drum dial. 80 to 82 is about the max. 83 is the absolute max. Anything beyond 83, the head will start to stretch. Okay. And you don't want that because it, it, you're not doing anything. It won't even move the needle. The head will just stretch right. and it'll, and it'll uh, deform the head and it can actually break the drum head. Okay, now two things. Okay. Um, one is, please explain to okay. them what the measurement is when we throw okay. out the numbers just so they have right. some reference. Well, on, on this here, what we're reading is it's a measurement of tympanic pressure. And that just converts to Newton centimeters. It's a measurement of force. Okay. So we're measuring the downward force that this has. And if you could picture uh, a blanket pulled tight between mm -hmm. some people, and you put a stone or something in the middle, and if right. you could pull that tighter, that blanket tighter, that stone would move up and down. Right. That's exactly what we're measuring with okay. that. You're measuring that tension as it deflects into the drum okay. head. And the spring and the mechanical mechanism that's inside is designed specifically for drum heads. Okay, and I so, didn't, I just wanted them, okay. everyone, me included, to have some reference of what the number means. Even right. though it's not anything you have to memorize, but I wanted, I know if we don't mention it, people right. are going to say, well, what number is that? Is well, it's, it's that very, pressure? It's, is very it? it's very unique to drum dial. Uh, drum dial is the only drum tuner that uses tympanic pressure. Um, and the numbers are the same. We use a calibrated mechanism, a calibrated spring. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take five different drum dials, they're all, if you were to uh, measure, the they're same. all going to give you the okay. same number. That's a good thing. It's, and <laughs> other uh, tension meters don't do that. Right, so right. you may have a 68 on one and a 55 on the one right beside it. Oh. So uh, th that you want to be careful with that. Well, my, my next question kind of goes, backs us up a little bit. Okay. Um, you were mentioning when you first put on a head, you know, to do the opposites. Right. And I guess my question of that is the way I've always tuned drums and put heads on is I do two at a time. Right. Opposite. Is that okay? That's so, perfect. Okay. That's, that's a much better way to, to okay. see yeah. the head. I'll see it yeah. like this. And I, I tune yeah. like that, but now I know a lot more about it. Yeah, I'll get them here. I'll rotate it and do like a, you know, so it's your seating the drum head evenly all the way around. That's that's very important. You don't want the head to be cocked. Right. right. S sitting one way opposite or the other. You don't want to bend the rim no. or have no. uh, grossly uneven tension. Right. And when you say you use the drum dial when it's about ready, the number one sign for that is when it's got a certain amount of tension and it's smooth, there's right. no ripples or kinks right. near the collar, right? You'll know, you can feel that there's a little bit of slight tension to it. Mm -hmm. You definitely, you could start checking it at any time with the drum dial. Right. Even when you first start, you could start checking the drum dial right away. Gotcha. So. Um, I'm gonna flip the drum over okay. if we're done with this item. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I want to address something that uh, we talked briefly about earlier. And, well, gosh, there's a lot of things I want to address. <laughs> but the first one is about the bearing edge and things yeah. to watch out for and something that the drum dial will figure out for oh, you. Right, right. You know, let's get into that so that they okay. know. Because I think it's important in caring for drums. If you're going to spend all this right. money on your kit, even if it's not an expensive kit, if this is your passion, you want this stuff to last, you want to sound your best in the studio, at rehearsal, at a backyard party, um, at the Los Angeles uh, Forum, wherever you're playing, this is important stuff to know right. is how to take care of your gear. Absolutely. Well, the first thing that happens is whenever you do a drum head change, you always want to check your bearing edge. Mm -hmm. And usually that just entails running your finger over it, make sure the length's off of it, make sure there's no sharp spots or anything inside of it or, or on the drum head. But what's critical, what's really important is once you have the head off, it's the best time to check it to make sure that the bearing edge doesn't have high spots in it. And what so if it not, does? If what it has a high it? spot, unfortunately, the only way to fix that is to send it to a repair shop, have them recut the bearing edge. Okay. Now the problem is if it has a high spot, you know, fortunately not too many drums come from the factory where the bearing edges are that bad. Right. But if they do have a high spot, um, you're, you won't be able to tune the drum very well. You can tune around it, mm -hmm. you can try and work with it, but the drum will never sound as good as it could, you know, if the bearing edges were completely flat. Right. All, all because you can't get these, right. all of them even. There's you won't be, be able if to. The, if the problem's here, or if right. it's even here, these two are going to be different from the rest of them, right? Right. What will happen is if you have a high spot, this part will read, say if you're tuning these to 85, mm -hmm. this part of the drum, if it had a high spot, would read 87, 88, and there would be no tension on the lug. And drum dial would immediately identify that. 
you would know that there was a high spot here because you had equalized tension, but the lug would be loose. And the only reason, or the only thing that would cause that would be a, a high spot or a low spot in the bearing edge. So is it correct then that if you don't detect that and you're constantly trying to crank that down, that's when your rim gets bent? And right. Okay. What will happen is if you have a high spot, this part of the bearing edge and this part of the hoop will stay straight, but at the high spot, the hoop will actually bend up. I've seen okay. die cast hoops, mm -hmm. really nice heavy duty die cast hoops, bent and worked. And had when when they had changed the, the drum head, <clears throat> because they didn't realign the shell and the uh, the hoop to the lug, mm -hmm. they rotated, If had they marked those two spots and put them in the same position mm -hmm. as when they pulled it off, it would have been fine. But I've seen it where they put the hoop over here and now you have two high spots bent into the hoop. And now you have more problems. Yeah. They change the hoop again, it'd be another high spot. This, unless it goes back in the same position. Unless they put it in the same position. Right. right. So if you my my advice to anyone that has a high spot in the bearing edge, make sure that you mark the hoop, mark the lug to put it back. Mm -hmm. If worse come to worse, you know, you have to play that night, you gotta get it done. Go ahead and, and rematch them back up and tune, do the best you can right. around that lug. Right. But you will, and at least you know where it is, you know you've where identified it, you can it, fix it, and you're not gonna ruin every end of your hoop. And, you know, right, that makes sense. And, the, and the nice thing too is that with the hoops this way, hoops are easy to fix. Those mm -hmm. are very easy to repair. You put them on, on the edge, mm -hmm. and you can use a board or use your hand, and you can slightly flex those back in place. Right. So hoops are easy to fix, you can do those yourself. Bearing edges, unfortunately, you can't repair them. Right. Uh, backing Unless, up. well, you can't, you have to send them to a, uh, right. a shop send to have, it's, yeah. it's not something you, that I would recommend you do Yeah, don't home. get your file don't, out. Right. right, don't do not do that. <laughs> don't break out the torch. Um, going back one more step mm -hmm. before we move on to Tom's, when you see the top head, you right. do apply pressure when you first see that, or do you right. recommend, what I recommend not doing that at all? It's, it's, it's optional, but okay. personally, I recommend for a batter head, mm -hmm. especially for a snare drum, go ahead and seat it. Mm -hmm. Seat it that way. I usually seat uh, top batter heads on the toms, mm -hmm. four toms, and also on the bass drum. Resonant heads, I don't. What if we had um, a pinstripe or a clear or an mm -hmm. ebony or a hydraulic on, on the top? Would you seat it I would with seat pressure? it with, with the palm pressure. Okay. I do, what we found over 20 years of experience with this is that if you seat a batter head mm -hmm. that way, is your, the object is to get the collar, the inside edge of the drum head to take the shape of the bearing edge. And the sooner you can, you can do that, the better. What we found is that if you apply the palm pressure to it for mm -hmm. just the batter head, the drums stay in tune longer. That They'll maintain sense. that pitch better. Yeah. But there's a, a caveat to that. If you have a floor tile and you really want the lowest sound possible, yeah. Don't. Just tune up to your note and you'll be fine. Okay. I have a question about okay. that when we set up When we tops. set up the tops. Yeah. Okay. Which I think we're about ready to do. Should mm -hmm. we do that? We can do that. Okay. Yeah. We'll be right back in two seconds. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to get into the science of toms. But before we do, we got to see what this ended up sounding like. And I'm such a hands-on kind of drummer um, that I just, I love the feel of the head. I like to feel the tension and kind of give it a tap. You were talking about the tuning tap and right. I'll never forget when I was 13 and my um, concert band director taught me how to tune timpanis with just a flick and fell in love with timpani drums and it took me 20 years of digging rosebush holes in my parents' yard <laughs> to pay the timpanis off they got me when I was 13. <laughs> same distance from the rim, it sounds exactly the same. Sounds great. Good. Sounds great. So, Tom Toms, man, mm -hmm. I have so many questions on, on, on this. And so I'm just going to throw some stuff out there if that's okay. okay. Sure. Um, the kit that I have set up in the studio now, the Blue Bonzo kit, and who knows, maybe by the time you see this, it will have been reconfigured because I'm adding drums to it, but they have no bottom heads. 
Okay. And they haven't had bottom heads since 1979, 81-ish. Okay. Yeah. Almost couldn't get that prehistoric number out of my mouth. And they probably never will have bottom heads on them right. because I don't even know where the hoops and lugs are anymore. It's been so long. But I also, and this is just my personal preference for those drums, I love how they sound without bottom heads. Mm -hmm. I love drums that are very melodic, drums that ring out. And I know with my wide range of audience members, y'all like something different. Um, and that's what's so great about drums. We all have different, we could, you, myself, my camera crew and five other drummers, all 12 of us could have the same five piece kit with the same sizes, but we might like them tuned differently, dampened differently. The positions will absolutely be in different places. Right, right. That's what's so cool about drums. So some of the things I might ask, um, yeah. the, the answers I think are kind of subjective or the subject matter is subjective because we right. all like our own preferences. So. Mm -hmm. If I don't have bottom heads, let's start with that. Is there a different rule to tuning with the drum dial? Are there different no. things? Okay. No, it's it's actually easier to tune a concert style tom. You know, they use uh -huh. those in, in marching and concert toms without the heads are really popular, seventies and eighties. Yeah, yeah. And then they so started bringing the heads back. <laughs> well, they were they're easy to tune. You get a, a nice melodic temp sound out of them. Mm -hmm. um, Roto toms, things like that, yeah. were real common at that time where you could spin right. them and right. change the pitch right. on them. But no, the, you tune those the same, and again, let the, the depth and diameter of the drum determine the pitch. Okay. The main thing is that if they sound good and you like them, leave them. You know, that's that's right. what we're after. Right. You know, and, and that's that's the number one rule. If okay. it sounds good to you and they feel good, nice even stick response, mm -hmm. and have a really nice downward sound progression. That's what that's what we like. And what the drum mm -hmm. dial does is it helps you attain u uniformity. Absolutely. Right? And what's nice with drum dial is the numbers are going to be very similar. Mm -hmm. You don't have to remember a top head edge frequency, a bottom head frequency. Mm -hmm. You don't have to remember any of that. With drum dial, they're going to be very similar. Okay. What will happen is the depth and diameter will determine the pitch. Mm -hmm. Nice, and if you have all the same heads on the top and bottom, same style heads, right. you'll have that nice even progression down. So going to a drum that has you know both the top and bottom heads, most most drums are, are tuned that way. Right. Uh, the only analogy I can think of is on a guitar. If you were to take a six string guitar, you could certainly use all the same thickness strings, mm -hmm. but if you have your high E or your low E to your high E. Right. But if you tuned the strings like that, the neck would bow to the right. So right, right. With, with that in mind, if you have a thick head and you have a thin head tuned to the same tension, that's you know what they do with the guitar strings is right. there'll be different thicknesses tuned to almost the same tension. And drum dial uses that same oh. basic mechanical uh, physics principle mm -hmm. that when you have a thick head and a thin head tension the same, the thick head will be lower sounding than the bottom head. And what we like to do with toms to get a lot of sustain, a lot of volume, and uh, you know a nice even tone out of the drum, uh, it's more of a warm sound and it has a nice decay. With two heads, that's what I like as opposed to a single head is that you have even more decay. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice boom, you know, is it kind of, right. it's almost like it's traveling away from you. It's because of the relationship, the heads will vibrate between each other. Right. And without that, you just have that single head going, uh, pushing right. away. The exactly. pinstripes, yeah, good combination with the pinstripe. The pinstripes are two-ply head. They put a little bit of coating in between them, uh, okay. at, just at the edge. Okay. But it's a two-ply, gives you a total of 14 mil uh, thickness or okay. seven mil plies. And it's a real common to put a 14 mil or two ply, you know, total 14 mil uh, head thickness with a 10 mil head. Ambassadors are like that. Uh, let's see, the Evans heads would be like a G2 for the mm -hmm. top. That's a two ply head. That's the same thickness, and a G1, which is the 10 mil on the bottom. So that's another really common good head combination. Mm -hmm. That's what we have here. Uh, if you wanted an even deeper sound, you could match the readings, and you would use the same thickness head as you would on the bottom. On the bottom, okay, and I was gonna you, ask if... You would have the, a little bit longer sustain, and it would be even deeper, or deeper. lower sound. So um, a fatter, more body, well, or, it, or just it, tonal? Tonal-wise, okay. it, it would be lower. 
Um, again, you know, with personal preference and that, there's so many options. Yeah. You know, when, I, when I'm doing a jazz kit or setting up something like that, we're going to go with probably an ambassador 10 mil on top mm -hmm. and then uh, a 7 mil or a diplomat style head for, for the bottom. Gives a really high pitch, a coated head, so if you're using brushes or something like that, uh, for a jazz kit, that's ideal. What about guys that are still using, um, like Evans Hydraulics right. on the top? Does, is there a different science to tuning it at all? No, it's all exactly the same. You okay. tune them to the same numbers, actually. But what you'd end up with is just a deeper uh, a deeper tone with less uh, sustain, less okay. more, faster decay, less less sustain. Um, okay. You know, you wouldn't have the ringing coming out of the drums. I find that I like the ring out, out of the drums. I do too. But a lot of people don't. And, and some sometimes when you're recording, you don't want that. So hydraulics or something might be ideal for that. Yeah. Or a dead ring or something to put on right. that. Or the ports. Or the, uh, the ports. Yeah, or the old fashioned mm -hmm. dampening. Do they still make drums with dampening belts? No, yeah, I don't I even haven't know. Seen, I have one, <laughs> but I haven't yeah. seen them in a yeah. long time. No. Um, so show everybody now okay. um, how you would tune a tom, the upper and lower, and please sure. show the the okay. the result of the intervals, just how beautifully okay. um, intervaled they are. If that's well, the if, right if way you to had a 10, mm -hmm. 12, 14, and 16 inch tom, mm -hmm. the two inch difference between a 10 inch and a 12 inch tom will give you a natural third. If ever, if you're using the same drum heads and everything is tuned and tensioned the same, you have a natural third. So you oh. had a 14 inch tom and you had a an 18 inch floor tom that would give you a natural fifth between the two drums. And, and just so we're clear, so mm -hmm. the guys and girls out there know, that's regardless of the depth of the drum. The depth correct? will change it a little bit, okay. but not that much. Okay. It's still gonna, if, if they're the same uh, distance between, usually we're using, we're talking about the same, same uh, ratio, drum manufacturing, the same okay. ratio, yeah, thanks. The same ratio uh, between the drums, that'll give you that progression. Now, if you have a, a much shallower, uh, mm -hmm. drum, uh, it'll be a, a, even a higher pitch and it won't be a fifth at that. What if, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of interrupting the process right. here, but this discussion is causing other questions to come to mind that you all might have out there. What if I have four piccolo toms that are all the same diameter and they're all the same depth? How do I tune those so that there's a nice interval, but the heads aren't it's too tight or too loose in either right. direction of well, that spectrum. What will happen do do is if, if you use all the same diameter drum heads, mm -hmm. if you don't use a thicker, you know, say like a, a diplomat thin on these others down to a really thick head on the bottom, yeah. so you left those all the same, you wouldn't have the same stick response. You're going to have a right. really high to a really flappy, soft, soft feeling drum. Right. It wouldn't feel as good. But that's the best you can do in a situation yeah. like that. Okay. Is you would have to loosen those heads enough to get, if you wanted that progression down. Okay. Now an easier way would be to find it to where it was just good enough stick feel and keep dropping the bottom head and raising the, high, the, right. the top head. So you could tune the top head, say, to all... Uh, 75 and just lower the bottom heads. But if these are the shallow ones, if they're shallow, that have you're, no head you're, on the bottom. You're stuck. Okay. You're stuck with that sound. Okay. It, gotcha. Fortunately, we, we have different depths and diameters yeah. to deal with. Right. But on a, in this case, we have a 12 inch, a 13 inch, and a 16 inch floor tom. Very common uh, drum sizes. Yeah. We are using pen stripes on top. We're using ambassadors on the bottom. So a two ply, 14 mil total head thickness on the top, mm -hmm. 10 mil on the bottom. So 14 mil, 10 mil. So we have okay. a thicker head on top. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a natural uh, lower pitch than what's on the bottom. So mm -hmm. lots of sustain. Um, easy to tune that drum. It's gonna, okay. it's gonna uh, have nice, long, sustained, good pitch difference between the tops. And these We're, are already tuned? These are tuned. Okay. They're, what we've done with this Tom is we have a uh, 75 on the top, 75 on the bottom, but I've done something different on the 13 inch. Okay. What I've done is I wanted to go thirds across these drums, so I have this one tuned to 75 top, but the bottom head, I dropped it to 73. So and that reason, changes the tone, but it maintains right? the same stick response. Right, right? I had the same stick response from each tom. So here we have 75 top and bottom, mm -hmm. 75 top, 73 on the bottom, and then this one, 74 top and bottom. So it's easy, you know, and, and they have very similar stick responses between the toms. Now, had this one been a 14 inch tom, I would have tuned it exactly like that one, top and bottom. Right. So we have natural third. I don't know if you can hear those ones. Yeah, you? absolutely. Go ahead and try it. Yeah. It 
took yeah. two minutes to tune these up, and that, that was it. So. And when someone buys a drum dial, Steve, is there some sort of chart to help them yeah, with yeah. this? Yeah, we put, we put a chart inside. Okay. And plus, they can, you know, call, email. I get those all the time. You know, custom tuning what settings do I and things do? like that. Yeah, we have. <laughs> I think I got a chart. We'll grab that here. They all come with instructions, and here's a tuning chart with recommendations oh, yeah. in that there. Drum size, your batter, medium clear, your batter coated, your batter two ply, your resonant thin. Right. This is cool. Now I'll make sure we. And it's on the website too. It's easy, easy. And, uh, you know, if people want to check that out, they can. What do you think is the most common mistake drummers do in tuning their drums? I, I, and, and I'll, before you answer, I'll just say, I think that most people have never really been taught how to tune their drums or they've been taught wrong right. or they simply go by ear and, and maybe they get a tone that they like, but they don't realize that maybe it's a lot tighter here and they're warping the rim or what do you think is the most common mistake? The most common mistake is just putting the head on and tightening it down in, in, in just in any fashion that you want. Mm -hmm. What I recommend to folks that are new to tuning drums is sure we want to tune in our normal crisscross pattern, mm -hmm. you know, the 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock. But after you've got the head seated, tune in a circular pattern. Most people leave that step out. To right. fine tune, always fine tune in a circular pattern. And it's nice if you can tune up to your note. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> whether you're tuning by ear using drum dial, tune up to your note and you'll feel those same those same differences. Right. Now here's something that's common that uh, will happen. You're tuning this this low here, mm -hmm. and by the time you get back around to it, it's a higher pitch. And the reason why is that this lug, as you tighten it, it affects the entire drum head. Each one of these lugs has a relationship to this to lug the, here. Yeah. So if you keep that in mind, just remember small increments. If you okay. tune in small increments, you'll be fine. By the time you get back to this one, if it's a little bit lower, say if we were to tune this, we were to 75, mm -hmm. this was at 74, these were at 73 and 72, leave it. Probably by the time you get around to it, it's going to be 75 again. Gotcha. It'll be already tuned to the pitch that you want because the rest of the drum has brought it up to the tension that you like. That makes sense. I want to ask you a little bit about um, the, I'd be remiss if I were here at the yeah. Drum Dial Factory if I didn't ask you a little bit about the research and development. Sure. I know you mentioned a little bit earlier kind of what the epitus was of this whole thing, but right. you went from high school into university, right? Yep. For yeah. music? For music, started out in music and then transferred over to the engineering programs. So, okay. Yeah. And did, what and, did And I've got to mention University of Arizona. They've been very oh, kind to me. Great. And the physics department has been wonderful. So great. opened their doors to me and have been very helpful. So great. And, and when you took Shout the music, out to them. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And did you major in music? Uh, just briefly, just okay. briefly, and then later transferred over to the engineering. Were company. you playing in bands and yeah, all locally, that? locally I played in bands and that did, did uh, a little bit of studio work. Okay, you know, just like most drummers, you know, growing up in the air. And we're about the same age, so this was what early eighties. So then the seventies and eighties. Yeah, seventies and eighties. Yeah. And did you come up with the product at that time, or did you start using it then, or did you just know yeah. it was needed because using the were you using drums and percussion that well, belonged to the school? I was. Well, I, I did. Okay, because sometimes was, that stuff's not always cared for that well, and right. you got generations of students that have been tuning right. things differently, and the heads are... Well, by that time, again, the with the timpani, right. you know, there's techniques for tuning timpani, and, and that right. was uh, a, a big issue. You want to get the drum head in tune with itself to clear the timpani right. at its lowest setting before you start bringing it up. And it's, it's hard to do that. It's hard to hear the difference between, is it sharp or is it pitch bend, bending bow right. coming with up? It's sound, hard to hear that. Yeah. I needed something that was a little more visual for me, mm -hmm. and I had already had the drum dial, but it wasn't a drum dial at that time, it was just, you know, a meter in a box. I was doing some studio work, people asked about it, right. and uh, it was, you know, came, came from that. What's the biggest difference between, um, I guess I'll call it the, the analog model, if you don't okay. mind holding that, sure. and, and the digital model, well, yeah. other than yeah. the fact that obviously it's digital, what's, is there any other difference well, really? Or? There, there's some, some big differences. The main thing is that uh, a lot of users asked for a digital version that was mm -hmm. easier to see. And what happened was when we went with the digital model, um, 
it's easier to calibrate. With this one here, you set it on glass, or something. I don't know if you can see there, but you would set it on glass. If it was not quite on zero, you would loosen the bezel, you rotate it to line up with zero, and it's calibrated. Okay. With this one, what's nice about her, I'll turn it off, and turn it back on. When you set it down to calibrate it, you just press and hold the calibration button for three seconds, and it's calibrated. Oh, That's it. It's so easy to calibrate. Yep. And then it goes into sleep mode after five minutes, so you don't have to worry. It extends mm -hmm. the battery life in that. So at this point, you don't have to do anything else with it. Other than use it. Just and use it. Your and besides, when it turns off, you know, after five minutes, or if you touch it here, it'll turn off on its own. Right. You just depress the plunger, and it comes back on. Oh, and it's wow. already calibrated. Wow. You can see that. <laughs> But that's the easy part. The other difference is I added a uh, cool feature to the back where you can put your drum. Oh, well, on. that's handy. Yeah. Yeah. And the unit, if, well, while we're talking about yeah, absolutely. it, um, it comes with its own calibration standard here. Oh, is that what that is? So the, on the glass, and you're all set. That's really cool. And why glass? Because it's nice and flat. flat. You want something okay. that's hard and flat. Okay. To, is it, well, here I'll show you on the wood. See how it reads 94 on the wood? The wood's yeah. very hard, but it's actually measuring the fiber of the wood. That makes sense. Yeah. Here we're at 100, so you want something that's real fair. Yep. Oh. This doesn't. Right. That's cool. And a handy dandy case. Yeah, it comes this with the case. Great. you got to have the case for it. Yeah. To protect the unit, keep it together. You've got a place for the edge gauge. Yeah. And the edge gauge, I don't think we talked about that that much. Do you want to show that? It was a customer had asked for that. Uh, when you have a pinstripe, it's easy. You can just use the pinstripe. As, as an easy mark. It makes it really accurate. So you're measuring literally yeah, they, from the same distance. Right. And okay. because the, the drum is, you know, as you, it changes in tension as you right. get closer to the center of the drum. Right. So we want to have an equal distance as close as closely as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, we set these up to where they're within a three-eighths of an inch. So if you notice on the bottom, mm -hmm. it's a really small hole opening for right that there. I, to see that I gotta ask you this. Okay. Um, what's what's the craziest question you've ever got on a phone call, but that made you go, "Oh yeah, I guess people do need to know that about right. tuning." What's the most left the, field the, thing that taught you yeah. something? Uh, how do I shave a goat skin? That was the you know what do I use to shave a goat skin? Oh together? wow! Yeah, well, this I, came from like what country? <laughs> Oh, you mean to make a drum head? I to thought you meant for like a, a tent or well, a jacket. Yeah, right. <laughs> for the drum head, was, the, the way the drum dial works is uh, synthetic heads have a nice, even, uniform head thickness. And, right. But this guy had, you know, a natural skin. And natural skins, if it's a vellum type for the old style of timpani heads or something. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's a uniform head thickness, that's you're, you're in good shape. But natural skins, you know, for congas and I was going to ask, can you that, use these on, yeah, on all absolutely. those types of drums? Absolutely. But keep in mind that if you have a thick and thin spot, that's what makes yeah. those natural skins so unique. But fiber skin, you know, yeah. those type of drums, are, yeah. you don't have to worry about those. It's a very uniform head thickness. But yeah. I use them for tuning congas, for tuning bongos, uh, djembes, I don't know. So I use wow. them for tuning all of them. But uh, that was the craziest question I had. You know, how do you shave a goat skin? And right. I thought, I'm just glad that it was... Uh, you know, off the goat when you shave it. So. <laughs> now, can't you? That raises a whole other question. Could I use this on my timpani drums to at least get the tension of the rim right. and the collar? That's a good question because that's what I originally. And mine are pedal on. tuned, by the way. Perfect. So, are they, are they Ludwig's or they're old Slanger Slangerlands Slanger? from like oh, nice. the late okay. 50s. Great. Yeah, they belonged to a drummer by the name of Mel Zelnick. Okay. who had a music store in the neighborhood where I grew up. I didn't take lessons there, but he was the neighborhood music store. I took lessons yeah. uh, from a store about 12 miles away where yeah. I started when I was seven, then my parents moved to the other end of the valley. But Mel Zanuck played with like um, Artie, John, Artie, uh, sorry, Artie uh, Shaw and um, you know people of that era. And I had this crazy idea that I had to have my own timpani drums. I was like I said, 13 or 14, and my parents somehow and you still found out. I do. <laughs> they, they found out that he happened to be selling right? a yeah. pair and they got them and they weren't even that expensive. They were $700. Wow. They're fiberglass bowls, okay. but the only difference you notice is that they're about 100 pounds lighter. Right. They're not heavy. The, bottom, the bases are cast. Um, they sound amazing. They're my favorite 
percussion instrument. I just love my timpani drums. And all the John Bonham style, I play on them with my sticks okay. as part of fills and, and during solos. I, of course, also use, um, I also use um, my new mallets on them and all of that. Yeah. But as we're talking about this, it occurred to me, well, couldn't I use this to at least um, set yeah, the intonation right. of the, the hook? Yeah. Well, originally, that's what drum dial was designed for, is from clearing timpani heads. Oh. So, with that in mind, what you do is you set your timpani to the lowest setting, mm -hmm. equalize the tension around probably around 68 to 70 on drum dial, just match each gauge, gauge tuning point, and uh, it'll be in tune with itself, and you're ready to go. Wow. The nice thing, here's the cool part about drum dial, is if you set the drum dial, say your pedal's over here and you're looking at the drum dial this direction, right. set the drum dial opposite, and as you tighten the drum head, mm -hmm. it'll actually start to tighten and change the drum head here. You can actually see it as you push down the pedal. I don't know if your viewers can see that. Let me turn that around there. Okay. And where you both can see it, as you tighten the pedal, you can see the needle. It'll do that. Yep. Yeah, and because you, obviously the tension of the head is. Right? That goes 75. Okay. Right. Oh, I can't wait. Right, so 74 <laughs> a little bit. So for Tempany, yeah, they're ideal. They work really well for Tempany. So I got these in. 1977, okay. and I feel like I'm finally going to calibrate them with themselves. You'll tune them, yeah. Get, 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 just, you know, get the wrinkles out, get them to their lowest setting right. where they're actually making a sound. Yeah. And you'll, you'll know from the notes in that that you have. Okay. You can tune up to them. We used to have to play scales. Um, yeah, yeah, them, yeah, them, 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 yeah, 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 very cool. Well, thank you so much for educating yeah, me yeah. and our, our wonderful yep. viewers about not just tuning drums, but... Um, why the drum dial is so important and how it helps in the health of not just your heads and staying in tune longer and tuning a bit more accurately regarding what kind of sound you like, but also in caring for and what to watch for with your hoops and what kind of signs you might right. see that'll tell you that your bearing edge of the actual drum might need some attention. I mean, there was so much information here. and. Well, before I let you go, yeah. let me just real quickly, sure. get the drum in tune with itself, okay. match the gauge readings, yep. use the chart that's there for drum dial, but the main thing is get it in tune with itself, right. get a sound that you like, and let the rest of the toms with the depth and diameter determine your pitch. Right. You have nice, good stick response from each drum. It'll feel good, they'll sound good, and it's easy to remember one or two numbers with a drum dial. Yeah. That simple. Absolutely. And have fun. Very cool. Thanks, everybody, for joining Steve Fisher of Drum Dial and myself. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Take care. Stick to it. Keep practicing and tune your drums. Buy a drum dial.